In this video, we're going to focus on the functions of the parts, um, as well as the basic location. There's another video you need to watch that will go over the location of these parts. So we're going to start with the, the ear, and here you can see the whole model. And we're going to start with the auricle or the pinna. In the auricle or the pinna, the, uh, its job is to direct sound waves towards the middle ear. So remember, we have the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. So the auricle or pinna is going to direct the sound waves towards the middle ear. And then what's going to happen is these sound waves are then going to hit the tympanic membrane. And what the tympanic membrane is going to do, it's going to take these sound waves and convert it to mechanical movements, and it's also going to amplify the sound wave. So if sound comes in through waves, it hits the tympanic membrane, which is then going to convert these sound waves into mechanical movements. Those movements are then, let's go to the next slide, here's the tympanic membrane. The movements are then going to be passed on to the auditory ossicles, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes, which again, you need to know individual anatomy of those. Oops. You need to know individual anatomy of those, and that's covered in a different video. But what they're going to do is they're going to help focus the mechanical movements to the oval window. And again, you need to know the anatomy of the oval window, which again, you can get from a different video. So we're going to take a sound wave, convert it to a mechanical movement with this tympanic membrane. And then if you notice, here you've got the tympanic membrane, which is really wide. And it gets smaller and smaller until you're going to focus those sound waves on that oval window. So again, the ossicles are going to focus those mechanical movements to the oval window. And they're also going to help amplify that sound wave. One of the things you have in your lab is the difference between conduction and sensoneural uh, deafness. Conduction deafness is when the tympanic membrane in the auditory ossicles do not amplify or focus as well. And that's because these are joints between these auditory ossicles. And just like any other joint in your body, as they get older, they become stiffer. And so that can be overcome by the use of a hearing aid, which will help amplify those sound waves. And then once we hit that oval window, remember a wave will travel through the cochlea. And what the cochlea is going to do, it's going to convert those mechanical movements into action potentials. So you've got this cochlea with fluid in it. A wave travels through that cochlea. Depending on the quality of those, those sound waves, those mechanical movements, it's going to convert it into action potentials, which are going to travel down this vestibular cochlear nerve which is one of the cranial nerves that you need to know. Within the cochlea is our structures called the spiral organ of corti. And these corti, spiral organ of cortis are actually the specific areas with the receptors, these hair cells, within the cochlea. And so these spiral organ of cortis, they contain hair cells that are, that are going to technically, this is the part of the cochlea that's going to convert the mechanical motion to two action potentials that will then travel again down the vestibular cochlear nerve. So that talks about how sound is converted from a sound wave to a mechanical movement to an action potential that then goes to the brain. The ear also has structures that are going to help with balance. And let's get specific with that. Oops, before I do that, let's talk about sensoneural deafness. Central neural deafness is when you get the destruction of these hair cells within the cochlea. When those are destroyed, there's no way to convert that uh, mechanical movement into an action potential. And so that is permanent hearing loss. And a hearing aid is not going to function to help with that. So that can happen. You can be born with that. Um, it can happen when you're exposed to loud sounds. It can also happen with aging. But you cannot reverse that, or you can't overcome that with a hearing aid. OK, back to the balance stuff. These three structures here, again, are the semicircular canals. And what the semicircular canals are going to do in terms of balance, they're going to monitor the rotational movements of the head. So you notice they go in, in, in any direction you move, the fluid in these semicircular canals is going to kind of swoosh back and forth. And there are hair cells that will fire action potentials depending on the rotational movement of your head, and then send that signal down the vestibular cochlear nerve um, and tell your body or tell your brain where your head is rotating and so on. Another structure we have are the ampulla, which are located at the bottom here. 
And what the ampulla do, do is they contain the receptors for sensory rotation. So these are the receptors. When this fluid swooshes in the semicircular canals, the receptors are in the ampulla, and they are going to send the action potential down towards the vestibular cochlear nerve. The last structures you have that you can't really see, they're located in the vestibule, are the utricle and the saccule. And what they do is they um, give information on the sensation of gravity and linear acceleration. So again, they're going to deal with the head and the movement and send signals down the vestibular cochlear nerve about the sensation of gravity and linear acceleration. So again, your ear deals both with hearing and with balance, so you're responsible for not only the location of these parts, but also their functions. If you have any questions, let us know. Um, these are the basic, oh, one more here. Actually, I just found one more. One more here is the eustachian or auditory tube. And what it does, it actually connects with your throat, and it is going to allow you to balance out or um, equalize the pressure on either side of the tympanic membrane. So here you've got one side, here you've got the other side. Uh, when you fly and you get a change in pressure and a change in volume, the eustachian tube will actually allow you to equalize the pressure on either side of the tympanic membrane. So when you feel your ear pops, what you're really doing is you're equalizing that pressure between the two, outside and inside um, the middle ear. So those again are the functions, and if you have any questions again, let us know.